Trini Breck from here with Andrew Coulson, who is the owner of uh, Protein Bites. So thank you for doing this video with us. Um, first question is, you've obviously got a lot of history with Dorian Yates. Yeah, it's a very good thing. Yeah, Dorian Yates has obviously got a really, um, you know, a unique style of training, very low reps, completely different what you're seeing out from bodybuilders. How did that sort of come about? What, what, what is Dorian Yates? What is your style? Uh, training. Um, I disagree with what you say about it in, in, with current bodybuilders. Yeah. You know, don't believe all you watch on YouTube. Yeah. You know, a small muscle group you want to hit with, you know, six to eight, ten rep range maximum. Yeah. And if you run that, you know, I would call volumetric training. Yeah. Or fitness training. You know, larger muscle groups, ten to fifteen rep range. How many sets would you recommend, sort of, for uh, the larger muscle groups, or something like chest, back, legs, compared to say? It, it depends on your mental mindset when you go to the gym. Right. That's how we move. Everybody's totally different. Yeah. And what I don't advocate is people training beyond their recovery zone. Right. So you see lots of guys at sort of average gyms and they've got good bodies. Yeah. But they don't train hard. But that's because they train within their recovery zone. And the biggest danger is overtraining. So if you overtrain, you're going to get smaller. You, you ain't going to grow. So anybody who tells you you can't train, it's talking bullshit. Yeah? <laughs> so, Dorian's principle is this. You load the muscle with intensity, and load, um, and you know, stimulate sort of positive and negative in the static rep range. It's really not that complicated. HIT training is basically what everybody does. Dorian can it's the one work except for your mindset. But realistically, if you're training more than six to eight working sets, and I'll tell you the logic behind that, if you can put the same effort into your third set, and you put into your first set, I question what you've done in your first set. Yes. So the, the perception of HIT is that you put it on into a working set, you build up to that working set and you put it on it. And that's where you still let go. I mean, a lot of people obviously train, you know, three, four, five, sometimes even six sets. So, how, but what advice would you give to somebody who just is stuck in the mindset they need to do four sets, they need to do five sets? Well, I, start, I tell them this the body can't count sets, your body can't count reps. Yeah. Right? Your body feels pain. Your body is only going to change if you go beyond your comfort zone, to use a cliche. Yeah. So, if your sixth set is the same as your first set, it cannot be straining your body yeah. beyond where it can go because you're doing six sets. So if you want to be a runner, run a 25 sets in the car, do what you want. If you want an average body, do 25 reps. If you want to be a bodybuilder, you've got to hit it with load. Yeah. But always keep your form. So anybody who thinks that they can do six working sets, I am saying don't do six working sets. What I am saying is you are not going to go. Yeah. <laughs> so we do, the bottom line really is for people, they might sort of confuse one set and just go in and do one set. I think it's, it isn't right that you would do maybe it's what's called a moderate warm up set of maybe 10 to 12 reps before hitting that, that 6 to 8. I, I, say, I don't advocate anybody doing one working set the way Dorian did it because of his mindset. I, I tell people to do two. So when they say one working set, you might put them through um, you get warm up sets, you warm, 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 warm on your whole body. Then what you would do is um, or progressive, or progressive warm up sets. So that might be 30% of your capacity. You do another progressive warm up set, that might be 60% of your capacity. You do another progressive warm up set, that might be 80% of your capacity. And you do up, up, two working sets. Now, if you can do anything more than that second working set, you ain't trying to have enough than your first working set. It's very, very simple. People are complicated. I think pretty much everybody goes to the gym for one thing, I see it results. We all enjoy training, I enjoy training, you always enjoy training. But that doesn't mean you need to go in and spend, you know, two hours in the gym. If you get the same results when you can't If you're training more than 45 minutes in the gym, if you train with even myself or join, you will train for more than 45 minutes yeah. in the gym. Where, how would you recommend taking cardio, say, if someone like yourself who um, is prepared for a bodybuilding competition, obviously you need to do cardio to drop the body fat. When would you recommend the most optimal time to hit that cardio? I personally do it um, either on a morning, on an every stomach after brunch train, uh, after taking some brunch trains, or following a weight session. Um, what would you I recommend? don't advocate cardio in the off season unless it's on non training days. Right, so what about him? We're always in the morning and fast and There you go, guys. You've heard it from you know, one of the masters of hit training, um, Trevor Dorian Yates, six time Australian. Yeah. Just quickly, um, obviously, you know, the order of Protein Bites. If you want to just give us a quick rundown of you know, what Protein Bites are, how we got started. Yeah, bear me a second. Um, it's 
basically protein in a chip. And we wanted to develop a product that was, first of all, different, but for more important, if you see the people who buy our product, you know, they're not bodybuilders, but bodybuilders in content. So it was a way of doing something that helped people eat protein in an easy way. So we know how many people eat crisps. Yeah, Compare how many people eat crisps in the whole world to eat protein bars. There's no comparison. So if you could somehow put protein in your chip, and make it healthier for somebody. That's why we're doing it. There you go, I saw, you know, you may be a bodybuilder, you may not have these posts you need to think. The casual person, the casual human go ahead. This could be a life set up for them. Listen, you're, you're, you're not telling me bodybuilders on a night don't eat chips. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So bodybuilders on a night eat chips, they give a protein in, they'll come around, yeah. they're all coming around now, initially they always have said to me, ah, I'm going to do that because it's not bad. It's not a protein shape, it's not a protein bar. Well, they're all buying the chips now. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> Right guys, that's it. Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Um, I know you've got some big things for the Tesco, Friday nights, things like that. I'll be covering this small um, and right, right up over at Cheap Friday Discount Club, so call it UK. Doing some reviews of the product, so once again,